All right, today I want to talk a bit about the Dome Diamant, one of my favorite high security locks. This is also a very old lock. I believe they started making this lock somewhere around the 90s. And uh, it's also a very odd lock in terms of classification because it doesn't use a uh, pin, so it's not a pin tumbler lock. It actually has a set of disks inside and a few sidebars. Uh, but it's also not a classical disk detainer lock because unlike with disk detainer locks, with this lock, if you insert the key, the disks actually turn while you insert the key and they only have like very few positions in which they can be. They, they can go two to the left or two to the right max. So it's not like the classical disk detainer where you insert and only when you turn the key, the disks actually start turning. And I investigated picking this lock a long time ago. I believe it was also in 2016. I showed a special pick that would allow you to uh, better pick these locks and jiggle out the disks. However, today I want to show you a different approach. And I also discovered this approach uh, around 2016. But unlike the picking one, I decided to keep this one secret until now because I thought it's a bit too easy for people to uh, replicate this in the wild. And I will talk a bit later about why I decided to disclose this now. I disclosed this to Doom eight years ago and they confirmed it. And I will speak about that a bit later. Uh, let's talk a bit about how the method actually works, what we need. So what we need is we need this EPIC. This is actually a very old EPIC uh, from the 2000s. Uh, it's the multi-pick control. It's a pretty heavy uh, EPIC and I hooked this up to a, a power source. This used to be hooked up to a, a LED battery. And um, I removed the EPIC needle here and put a little rubber on it because the only reason why we actually need this is vibration. We're going to cause vibrations with this tool. And the second piece that we need is this special key. Um, this is actually a key that has all the material removed at the positions where normally the discs rotate except for the tip because uh, pretty much all of the newer Dome Diamants have one spring-loaded disc in the very back that always goes to the same position. So we need the tip to be intact in order to hold this particular disc. And we actually do have a macro view here where I can probably also show you uh, this key a bit, with a bit more detail so you can see how it actually looks like. Yes. And um, what we also might need is this little piece of metal that's just used to actually help with the turning and the jiggling a bit. This is very bendy steel, so it's better than just touching the key directly with your hands, which absorbs a lot of the vibration that we actually want to go into the lock, not into our hands. So I set up the macro camera here. I have three Dome Diamants here. This one is the Muster Cylinder, which is essentially the sample one for which I also have the key here. So we can insert this here and this will just turn nicely. This also says uh, Musta here, just to, uh, which means sample. And we have two others that we're going to try open. Um, now what we do is we insert this here. If you're dealing with an older lock, I would recommend lubricating it in some way. Maybe use WD-40 to temporarily lubricate it. So the discs really start moving because especially if these locks haven't been opened quite a while, uh, the discs might actually get stuck very easily. And then there's multiple ways to actually do this, but I found this one to be the most reliable. So we just start on the bottom here. We cause vibrations until we either see an immediate open or we see like a larger false set, in which case we start to vibrate back a bit with this piece. Thank you. 
So now it's open. The time on how long this takes actually depends on, it's a bit of luck, but it also depends on the lock, how it behaves. It might be bidding related as well. Um, so you can see now I can actually turn this pretty much forever until I pull out the key because in inside now, none of the disks have a reason to rotate further and the sidebars are lodged into the disks. There's no springs pushing them back. The only spring loaded element is the last piece uh, and that is being in held in place. So now we can actually remove this from the vise. And I can put it here. So now you can see I can just turn this. And now we remove it. We reinsert it and this doesn't turn anymore. But of course, it still works with the original key. So this still works. Okay. Now we take the second lock, this one here. This one is a bit special because it has a spring-loaded coupling. Um, it's a rarer mechanism. Um, makes it a bit more tricky because the spring-loaded coupling also pushes the key out just a bit. So you have to hold against that in the beginning. Otherwise, it might be that the second last disc gets jammed up by the tip, but it still works. So insert our key here, get our vibrations going. There's the open. So as I said, this one is a bit trickier because of the spring force from the coupling. As you can see, it still it still works just fine. Same here, we can rotate now until we actually pull out the key. If we reinsert, it's locked again. And um, I believe this one should be the original key, which also works. All right. 
now take this one out as well. And we can insert this half cylinder that we have here. For this one, I actually do not have a key. And uh, I opened this one actually in exactly the same way than the others. But this one is actually a good example to show that you might want to try a different approach as well. It's, it's similar to bumping. With bumping, uh, you often have cylinders that you can easily bump open in one direction and it takes a long time to bump open them in the other direction. Usually you can get it working in both directions, but one direction works a lot easier than the other. I figured this is the same with this method and uh, that's actually the case. So if we insert this here. So instead of going from here, we can also go from here or from here and just give that a try. And we can use the same method of letting it bounce. So the problem is if we start from up here, we cannot insert here. We would other so we would have to go from the other side. So we can also start here. And it's open. So as you see, that one worked a lot easier in the other direction. And now if I pull out again, back in, it doesn't relock anymore. So that's the vulnerability. And uh, there are multiple reasons why I wanted to disclose this vulnerability now. Uh, one reason is that I believe other people are looking into this lock again. And I would say they will very likely find the vulnerability um, because it's, it's not actually that difficult to think about this kind of attack. You might also wonder why does this attack actually work? It's not 100% clear why it works. I have theories about it. So my guess is that one huge factor is that in these disks, there are not a lot of deep false gates. So the false gates in the system are really very shallow. So normally false gates would catch on during the vibration, cause a false set, and then you have to turn back quite heavily in order uh, to get a disk back out of this false set. But it feels like in this system, the disks really want to go into the true gate much more than they wanted to stay in false gates. And if, if you look at the disks, and I might add a picture of the disks here uh, in the video, uh, these are actually very shallow. And that's one of the biggest problems with this system. Um, the second reason why I decided to disclose this now is that it's been eight years. I believe that's plenty of time uh, to like warn high security customers or phase out this system further. And I was told that the system has been phasing out for quite a while. Um, and the, the third reason is that actually Dome gave me these two locks here, which are now uh, on markets outside of Germany. And they look a bit different. If you take a look at the key, for example, uh, if, we, if we compare the key, we see differences in the logos. We also see differences in the cylinder here. And I disassembled these and I compared the disks and uh, it looks like they actually changed the shape of the disks to have slightly deeper false gates. And they also added additional travel way. So the disks can now travel seven degrees further in both directions. And I made uh, extensive experiments uh, with these new models and I was not able to open them with this method at all. Now, I don't want to go as far as saying that it's impossible to open these because they are still susceptible to vibration and raking. But I would assume that even if you can get it to open, it will take much longer. So this is definitely an improvement. So overall, as a conclusion, I would say, uh, even though this is probably one of the nicest manufactured locks, I would say, there's really a lot of interesting points about this lock in terms of design and engineering. It's, it's really marvelously engineered. Uh, it has this inherent design flaw that this kind of attack uh, could work. And that's why I would recommend to not use the old version of this lock anymore for any kind of like 
high security uh, purposes. So that's all for today. And maybe I'm going to make another video where I can show with cutaways how the disks actually move and behave, but that'll be for, for another day. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I'll see you next time.